What's that? You want to actually have some self-expression and I don't know, have some brightly colored things in your room or maybe even tattoo yourself and have some sort of self-expression over your own body and surroundings? Boo, hiss, boo. Put on a beige jumper now and destroy anything of expression and color. Are you happy now? Random mum off TikTok. Are you happy now? I actually feel depressed already. <laughs> And there's actually stains on this, so that will probably actually irk the sad beige mums of TikTok. Sorry, this is why we just wear tank tops in video. <laughs> I'm just a cog in the machine now, but right, yes, my name is Cowder's Life, and if you're new to this channel, we do video essays talking about things from the internet, and then we all share our opinions in the comment section below and have a discussion. And if you're not new here, look, I'm wearing a hoodie. This is like, how does life out of tank? Well, I am still in a tank top, but I have sleeves. I can make jokes relating to sleeves. Not that that really occurs much. Anyways, we digress. Today Today we are talking about the sad beige mums of TikTok. Goes the clock. Anyway, sad beige mums are like the new DLC to horrid family influencer TikTok weird crazy mum channels. You know, we had the weird family channels that overshared all of their life. And you know, we've also had the weird Alma mums controlling what you'll eat, ruining food for you, for your life. And now we've got Boom, the non-eating version of almond mums, beige mums. It's like something out of a Disney movie. They will take away any form of self-expression and color and happiness and, you know, vibrancy and make it Instagram ready and that clean aesthetic which is deeply linked to classism, by the way, and we will get into that today. Hooray! <laughs> but before I start rambling off my points of why I think beige mums are wickedy whack and not all that, let's actually look at beige mums a little bit so we all know a bit about beige mums before we go into the pros and cons, main mainly cons, about them. And interestingly enough though, beige mums, or this very plain color palette parents, that was very wordy to say, actually started with wholesome, humble beginnings. Kind of, not really, but way better than it was now. Basically, the origins of being a beige mum or having a very simple color palette was to emphasize gender neutralness, eco-friendly, non-toxic products, because you know, some of those bright colored plastic friends are toxic if you eat them, which I don't recommend doing anyway, and also anti-capitalism, right? Buying fewer goods rather than buying everything. I'm gonna put you out of frame a little bit. And on paper, some of you might be saying, hey, well, that sounds pretty good, cow. So what's your gripe? Well, let me tell you my gripe. TikTok and social media influencers just saw this as another big thing to jump on and secure the bag. The most heinous type of creators on the internet are family channels. People that literally profit off their children. If your primary source of income is your child, you are doing something horrifically wrong and you are morally, fundamentally, and in totality, a horrific human. You really are. So these channels took this anti-capitalism approach to parenting and they they TikTokified it. And it's not anti-capitalistic at all, their stuff. Buying lots of stuff for content. Oh, the irony. One of like the big videos that did the absolute rounds to kick off this whole beige mum debacle was this mother that painted like her Christmas tree to make it fit her house's aesthetic. And boy, look at that. Doesn't that fit your house aesthetic so much better? Who doesn't love a gray star? I remember all the times I've looked up at the sky and thought, zooey mama. Boy, what I wouldn't give to be. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that grey star, what a sight. Isn't humanity amazing? How can you be this devoid of happiness and self-expression? Come on! Little Timmy just wants to run down the stairs, knee slide into the lounge on Christmas Day, and be greeted by bright colours of wrapping paper and toys and excitement. Instead, no, no, he's gonna smell the solvents of all the things you've been spray painting to meet your horrific aesthetic standards that you've got from social media that you think everything has to look a certain way. It's horrific and it's devoid of self-expression. You're just trying to fit a mold. Anyway, no, we're ranting too much. And this is not the video essay part. Let me show you another video from this creator, actually. So this creator got a lot of flack for this. So they kind of tried to like rage bait pivot their way out of it. But if anything, it kind of like really did show that they were just a beige mum and no matter how much rage bait they could do, it didn't change the reality. Join me for a morning in my life as a sad beige mom. I started my day like I always do with my favorite pair of sad beige slippers, but I suddenly acquired the world's worst headache from this ungodly amount of orange. Who even in their right mind does this? Before I could spray paint, or I mean fix the problem, my sad beige baby woke up from her nap. This is when she normally points and asks for all of her sad beige toys. I know she's 
trying to do a sarcastic bit, but her house really is sad and beige. Having like a couple splashes of color doesn't take away from like the devoid of human expressionlessness that there is in that house. It's fundamentally sad and it's not stylistic it's boring you're so scared to have a personality of some form of depth to you that you're like have you thought about the color beige and different shades of it your child will grow up to be like the riddler or something in a world of bet winner that's joker <laughs> you know but anyway in a world of beige i am <laughs> Barkley. oh this is this is really at the detriment of your children just in the name of content and rage bait and normally i find rage bait funny but i think this is kind of messed up because you're probably of your children and that's super not cool these like beige mum creators think they're like getting one over on the internet when they do like this rage bait and like show the stuff they're doing in their household to make it devoid of color and fun and they're like oh yeah i'm such a beige mum," as if they're trying to do something like satirical and self-aware but all they're actually showing is the house really is a boring nightmare like look at this one so this content creator painted her like child's little train beige colors and then she was like i so totally got you guys because even though it may look beige look at all this color and it's all hidden away in boxes huh little timmy you allow 30 minutes of playtime with the brightly colored stuff then mommy needs to put it away because she doesn't want you actually having any fun and vibrancy in your life now put down that fun toy timmy bop boop bop and chew on this train <laughs> mommy spray painted ah long gone <laughs> are the wholesome origins of like anti-consumerism and being like eco-friendly mommy wants to get the views on the internet so she's gonna spray paint the train and then you're gonna ride it shit's nuts it really is <laughs> Like, you're not getting one over anyone here. Your house is boring and beige. It would have been a really good satirical bit if you're like, you just got pranked, rage bait, rage bait. And then you actually showed the other rooms of your house. And this was just like your funny content room. But in all of their videos, when these people are walking through their house, the house has like three different shades of beige and that's it. Your house tastes like unflavored porridge, like a dry wafer biscuit, not dunked in like hot coffee or tea. There's just no purpose to it. Unless you're like hung over and you're trying to like just get something into your system. Anyway, we digress. And now I feel like quite clearly shown what the self expression version of alma mums are these beige mums let's get into the video essay side of this and talk about why it is problematic and it sucks not just for the child but for what it represents in society let's get into it yeah and i feel like initially one of the big points i want to talk about is like this need for things to be aesthetically like instagram slash social media ready that things have to be clean and concise and tranquil it always has to be like spotlessly clean and just devoid of any signs of life and fun and the beige mom would be like no but if you look in the cupboards there's fun there look that toy has splashes of red a normal kid's room is pretty messy if i remember correctly i once was a child parents would try and tidy up but boom yeah, i don't know you want to play with your toys i don't know it just feels sad if you're like one of these beige mums and you're getting stressed being like oh if it's messy or whatever it's not social media ready people will think i'm a bad parent oh my gosh i can't have that someone will call child services the solution my friend is not putting your children on the internet in general it is not okay it's not fair they can't consent their brains haven't fully developed yet they cannot understand the complete totality of being a person on the internet you're subjected to weirdos creeps critiques when you haven't even asked for it so putting a child on the internet for that just so mommy can secure the bag and perpetuate this fake idea of what middle class white america should look like you know it's not cool. I don't like it. And once again, I do stress, if your primary source of income is making content about your children, sticking them online and talking about how you raise them, you're a bad parent. You can't convince me otherwise. You're going to mess them up. And then the cats will go missing in the local area. It's been so long since I made a joke about these weird family channels curating people that murder cats. So you've got to let me have that one pass. Anyways, back on with the video essay. I've also seen other TikToks from these parents being like, here's some close suggestions. If you're fed up of seeing dinosaurs and fun things, you know, kids typically like wearing because who doesn't love a freaking stegosaurus? Anyway, so then the parents show these clothes. It's like, why are you trying to dress your child up like a 1920s minor? It's a child. They're going to be uncomfy in that. Give them some clothes they can roll around in and get messy in and you won't be pissed off at 
Ah, oh, but Lucas, that costs mummy forty pounds. Lucas doesn't care about money. He doesn't even understand the concept of money. Lucas wants to eat sand and stick Play-Doh up his nose. But he can't do that because you decided to buy the overpriced clothes. Now he must just sit there like this and be like, Mummy, could you pass the croissant? I bet these are also the type of people at like mummy meetups being like, Yes, and then my child looked at me and said, But mother, I simply didn't want to play in the sandbox. It will get my Birkenstocks and Carhartt overalls messy. I just wanted to sit there, eat hummus, and talk cheese with you girlies. Shut up, Tanya. You lie. Your child wants to eat sand like the rest of us. And stroke bark and see what texture bark feels like. I don't know. It's just wickety whack. And all of this feels so rooted in, like, middle class privilege aka classism. No, you can't look like the other kids to me. You can't wear dinosaurs. Your room can't be messy. You can't have the brightly colored plastic toys from the toy store. They're not good enough for you. You have to have the organically made wooden blocks which are boring as hell. And you must dress like a 1920s <laughs> businessman despite being 18 months old old. Having stuff is tacky. Having lots of things is tacky and ooey. Mummy doesn't like it. Now welcome to the age of boring, bland and assimilation to be a cog in the machine. Mummy's grooming you to be the perfect nine to five boy that probably also does rattle class A's on the weekend and also kills the local sex workers. Am I allowed to say that? I, d I don't know if I... Anyway, but these kids' brains will literally explode when they get like the first chance or taste or even just smell of freedom. Imagine when these kids go to college and they actually get to experience freedom in the land of the free USA. Gee, that's a joke. Anyways, that's another video essay. Back to the point and the joke I'm making. Like these kids are gonna swap out getting A's in class to literally doing class A's. Why? Because you're suddenly just... You're given so much choice and opportunity and you don't have mummy breathing down your back every second. What's that, Timmy? You left a plate with a crumb. Or is that a gel pen that's red or blue or pink? No! You actually even had to write in beige. That's not you. Is that possible? I don't know. This just makes me crazy. Because it's odd, like... It's one thing having an aesthetic, okay, but to also implement that on your children's toys. Surely that's going to hinder their development and also maybe just fun levels. I don't know if that's a scientific term, but it should be fun levels. You know, these mums at Christmas are probably unwrapping all their children's gifts the night before from relatives, making sure Tim Bob Blue Bee didn't get any fun colored toys. What's that? You got him a fun Nerf gun that's orange? No! <laughs> if Timmy's gonna recreate heinous things that have occurred in the United States of America, he's gonna do it with the beige fake gun because mummy's got an aesthetic she wants to put on everybody else. Okay. Now mummy's got to go drink some red wine. But she's going to put food dye in it. So ignore that. Like, ah! <laughs> this just gets me so insane and amped up because it is insane. The need to look a certain way on social media and forcing that onto your kid, which is going to affect the way they develop and perceive the world is so, so not cool. There should be a test to see if you're eligible to be a parent. And that test should literally be comprised of one question. Are you going to make content of your children? Are you going to profit off your children? And if you tick yes, you're not allowed a child. I just swore at myself. Okay, maybe the beige parents have a point. Maybe I was given too many stimuluses as a kid. And then you end up like me. Thank you, love a lot. That was really sweet. Anyways, people think these limited color palettes are like something to be proud of. Like it's a status symbol. But all it screams to me, and I feel anybody that can critically think slash a normal fun human being is, oh, you're devoid of personality. You're so scared to have any form of self-expression. Why? Because it might go against the status quo because their mummy might not be the number one baddie at Pilates if she's slightly different to what the expectations of by the way, a male pushed agenda of what a woman should look like, complacent, basic and simple. How dare she have some form of expression? I don't know, like go buy some bright colored Care Bears as a start. Honestly, going downstairs every morning and seeing them makes me smile. And also just going back to the kids, imagine if they go around someone's house, does the mother have to like vet check, bug their house to make sure there's no things of color or expression in the house? What's that? You put up your little boy's paintings on the kitchen fridge? No, no, no. 
self-expression bad how about some pictures of bamboo get, get it because bamboo's beige anyways when little jimbo slice rocks up to that kid's house and he sees all these brightly colored plastics and he maybe like ducks on one of the toys because when we're kids you know we put things in our mouth because we're teething or whatever and you know it's gonna be like an acid trip for him or tasting all these brightly colored plastics it'll be like the scene in project x you know that movie where the party scene's going on it's like i'm on the pursuit of happiness and little bobby it's just stimming and going crazy because he's got all these lovely tasty plastics in his mouth and then when he goes home he has to suck on wooden blocks suck on wooden blocks sounds like a tudor time insult bro just just go suck on wooden blocks i bite my thumb at you sir you know <laughs> i think you're never making good points here yeah. none of this is the original wholesome less is more eco-friendly anti-capitalism because the moment you're making content about being a parent and pushing this idea and then also having to buy content for this idea to further perpetuate and push the idea you're really giving into capitalism in its purest form. You're part of the cog machine now. And also, spraying the toys a different colour. Oh, the irony and hypocrisy. One of your core things was, you know, less is more and just having a few good things. You're altering the product by buying more products to change the product to fit your weird aesthetic. And well, I saw this mother get lots of heat because she sprayed her toys you know and she was like actually it's anti-toxic yes it's anti-toxic but you know if a kid does bite it or whatever or do you know whatever just kids are weird right whatever happens happens because you know you don't think about things too deeply and they do eat it it's still not good for you it really does just seem mental like they have to do some absolute mental gymnastics in their head to justify this and think they're in the right here when they're so clearly in the wrong and it's just weird whichever way you chalk it up the whole thing just feels like beyond silly and obviously the parents are just doing it because they're trend hijacking and they're trying to secure the bag mummy needs to make money from you if you have such a problem with the fact that kids toys are brightly colored why because bright colors are good indicators for kids that it's fun it's a good thing you know it's just very simple kids are very basic like that bright color must mean good and friendly right anyway if you're so against things like that maybe don't have kids if you're so concerned about your house being aesthetically a certain way you know don't have kids that's the simple solution right that will fix us all don't procreate but then how will i secure the bag oh no oh wait that's right yeah your primary source of income is your children you're so clearly devoid of all morals like it's such a shame family channels suck they're just not good and they try and beat bop the shoe bop and make it seem wholesome hey we're just having fun we're a family we're so relatable your white middle class conservatives perpetuating dumb ideas about how family should look and it's boring and it's soulless and these kids are going to grow up to be so unhinged because they've been so controlled or in the perfect world they grow up to be awesome and incredibly liberal despite you super annoying white picket house fence middle class american conservatives like you karen gosh darn it it's it's really hell for these children they are the ones that lose out on all of this the children such a big l for their like cognitive development and i bet the mums are being like but what? How? We're just doing aesthetics. No, because having these fun, brightly colored things is just normal. And you know, when you see the other kids playing with these things, you all want to have them too. And when you go home, you've got your, just your things your mum spray painted. And she's probably then in the cupboard, like huffing that spray paint to do all the mental gymnastics to justify this weird behavior. I get maybe having your lounge this color, but not your child's rooms. And like this one as well, this video of this child's room, like this is bleak. The comments being like, must be so good for them at nighttime. No, it's just boring. Having a room that doesn't represent you at all having your own room that you can customize yourself as a child or at least as you grow up is just it's just nice to do put your own posters up no you can't put that poster up mommy it doesn't suit mommy's aesthetic boo his boo belinda i've given these women so many different names i hope you can keep up because i can't and like i feel like the conclusion for this video is just the same as like every other video i do talking about family channels it's like these family channels get so used to making money off parenthood, making money off being a family and letting people into their life as a family that they end up having to do these weird mental gymnastics to justify it and to make it seem like a good way to bring up their children. When it's not, the conclusion to all of this is your children shouldn't be on the internet, okay? There's just no logical reason. They can't consent, they're too young, they can't think about the ramifications of all of this, and you're just whacking them on the internet. And I'm sure if this content didn't get loads of likes, you just trend hijack something else. But the fact it is, means you're gonna continue perpetuating these ideas of being a beige mum and giving them boring toys or spray painting their toys. It's only a matter of time before someone doesn't do it with non-toxic spray paint, and then the kids get ill, or just something sad happens, you know, it, it's, it's not cool to put these ideas on the internet 
even if you're doing it as rage bait, but you're not really, because when we see the rest of your house, it is boring and bland, Sarah, or whatever your name is. It just sucks. You securing the bag and living out Instagram ready aesthetics is at the detriment of your child. And that speaks volumes about you as a person. We've had so many people talk about how horrid it was growing up with an almond mum. We're gonna have people in like 20 years time talking about how horrid it was growing up with a beige mum. Ugh. Does that summarize it? Just, ugh. Just let people live, let people express themselves. And I guarantee you will have a far better relationship with your children in the future if you just let them express themselves how they want to, right? Not trying to confine them to your wants and needs. They're their own person, dear Lord. They're their own wants and needs, thoughts, processes. They like things you don't like, and you don't like things that they like. You know, that's just, they're just different. They're a different person. The fact that you're trying to control them to this level to meet mummy's standards is weird. And you probably might even develop a boy mum in that situation, a beige boy mum. Oh my God, the two Bs. Beige boy, baddie. Hmm, no, that doesn't work. I'm not really like, good at off the cuff stuff. Anyway, we digress, yeah. What a weird one though, like, it's just mad. It like blows my mind that people would condense their whole house to this color palette and not just that, but then control their kids' toys and make sure they fit into this aesthetic as well, all for the name of social media. Like, how do you even conclude on that? It's just, we've transcended as a society into some sort of heinous underworld. And this is like one of the, I don't know, infernos or something, but like, Let's get a discussion going in the comment section because I'm so interested to see what you lot all have to say about this. The spray painting, the rationing what toys they're allowed, fit their aesthetic, the clothes, how it's all so clearly linked to classism and trying to perpetuate this idea of middle class America, this clean aesthetic. No, you're not allowed lots of things. You're only allowed certain things, you know. Pfft, ah, meh, I just feel like I just had every single emotion in the space of two seconds there. It's mental though. Let's get the comment section going. Let's get a discussion going because this is one I actually just want to really talk about. There'll be another video essay here. I've been your boy Cowder's Life and if you've gotten this far through the video without subscribing, that's incredibly impressive. I respect you. And if you are already subscribed, that is super awesome too. And I like that just as much. Let's go team. <laughs> anyway, I shall see you all in the next one. Okay, bye.